and New Testament classes, Mr. Bearford. I compiled some of your questions on Second Peter. I'm not going to answer all of them. Some people were complaining that my videos were too long, so here I go. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, from Second Peter, two major categories of questions, some about false teachers and religious leaders, some about Judgment Day, and then a third one that a couple of you asked about. What does it mean to confirm your calling and election? Let's go through these. False uh, teachers and religious leaders. Yeah, so Jesus warns, and even the apostles warned, that in the last days, there will be many true teachers of Jesus Christ. Nope, they say in the last days there will be many false teachers, false prophets who will lead many astray. So you would expect for false teachers and false prophets within the church to have a huge following because Jesus says they will lead many astray. So for a false teacher to have a mega church of like 5, 10, 20, 30,000 people following him, it's exactly what Jesus says would happen. And you see that in modern day America and other parts of the world. How do we know if someone is a false teacher? Know your Bible. You need to know what does God's word say? What does it not say? Especially the New Testament. Of course, the Old Testament is important, but where the Old Testament, all of the Bible preaches Christ, but where the Old Testament preaches Christ in a veiled way, in a not yet revealed way, the New Testament preaches Christ revealed, unveiled, God has become flesh and dwelt among us, Christ crucified for you and raised for your justification. Know your Bible, know especially what Jesus says, his own words in the Gospels, Paul's letters especially. If you know these things and you hear a teacher saying something and you're like, wait a second, I don't think Paul said something opposite of that. You're identifying false teaching. Discernment only comes from knowing your Bible really well. Are they preaching Christ or are they preaching what the itching ears of their audience wants to hear? Are they preaching what their audience's sensuality wants to hear? In other words, are they preaching their own desires, what they want to talk about? Are they preaching what they think their audience wants to hear? Or are they preaching Christ from the Word of God? How bad is it to believe false things or believe false teachers or follow a false leader? Without getting into that in depth, let me just make it real simple for you. Believing in the gospel means your forgiveness of sins, your life, and your salvation. Believing in a false gospel, which Paul in Galatians calls no gospel at all, means despair or self-righteousness. Instead of forgiveness of sins, I just, I'll never be good enough. Or instead of forgiveness of sins, I'm good enough. Not life, but death. Not salvation, but hell. This stuff matters, especially when it comes to who is Christ, what did he do, um, how are we saved? You know, th th those questions really matter how a Christian or someone claiming to be Christian answers those questions. Who is Christ? What did he do? How are we saved? Um, could the Book of Mormon be true? No, God doesn't contradict himself in Joseph Smith's Book of Mormon, which supposedly was delivered to him by an angel. Uh, no, it contradicts the word of God. For example, um, Jesus and Satan are not brothers. What about modern day prophets? Um, you should be very skeptical. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says that in the past, God spoke to our fathers, you know, and through the prophets in many ways. Um, but in these latter days, in these last days, he has spoken to us through Joseph Smith. No, he has spoken to us through Jesus, his son. So I don't look for communication from God, word from God outside of Jesus. Where do I have Jesus words? As recorded in scriptures. What about modern day prophets? I just read that one. Examples of false teachers. Does the Bible give any? What about modern day false teachers? Yeah, the Bible names Judaizers. Um, in Galatians, there's these Judaizers who are claiming we still need to be followers of the law. In other words, men still need to get circumcised and we still need to follow the ceremonial cleanliness and stuff like that. And that's false, says Paul. All of that stuff was fulfilled by Jesus. He's ushered in the new covenant, so the old covenant is obsolete. It would be sinful for me to sacrifice an animal for the forgiveness of my sins. Just like I can't demand that men be circumcised. Christ has instituted baptism and the Lord's Supper in place of circumcision and animal sacrifice. Those are the means of grace for you and I. Baptism, the Lord's Supper, Christ's word, and wherever his word is attached with promise of forgiveness of sins. Um, also, the Nicolaitans, Gnostics, these are others' examples. You know, Gnostics thought that, you know, physical bad, spiritual good, and the Bible doesn't say that. God made us body and soul, all of it good, and we ruined all of it with sin. God saves us body and soul. The body is remade on the last day. We get a new body, and our souls are eternal through the forgiveness of sins. We get the Holy Spirit. Um, examples of modern-day false prophets. Um, 
Yeah, I wrote popular psychology masquerading as Christianity. You will get a lot of sermons, I've noticed, where they're not really preaching Christ. They're preaching pop psychology. Um, how to have a better marriage. How to have better relationships with your children. How to have a better whatever. And that, that's not Christianity. You know, the Bible touches on topics like relationships, love your neighbor, and, you know, proper relationships. But a sermon preaches Jesus Christ forgiving your sins by his life, death, and resurrection for you, securing your eternity with him in heaven. Death is not the end of you. Where is your sting, O oh death? You know, a sermon preaches Christ crucified and risen for you. A sermon does not preach popular psychology. Um, a really good way to know if you're hearing, you know, what your itching ears want to hear, or if you're hearing a true sermon, um, the true gospel is, is the pastor preaching from a text? Or, is the pastor preaching his own theme, his own topic, and then he's using the Bible to proof text it. And oftentimes when he uses the Bible to proof text it, he rips those scriptures radically out of context in order to proof text his point. Pastors shouldn't be preaching their own points, their own themes, their own topics. They should be preaching the Word of God. And through the Word of God, they should be preaching Christ because all of the Word of God is about Christ. Whether Old Testament or New, it's all about Christ. Um, another example is the prosperity gospel, you know, that Jesus wants you to be healthy and wealthy and successful now, whereas Jesus promised his apostles none of those things. He even promised them the opposite. Most of them were martyred. Um, you know, our hope is not in this life, it's in the next. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not about, you know, health, wealth, and prosperity now. It's about having faith and enduring the trials of this world, knowing that my true citizenship is in heaven with Christ. Judgment Day. Some questions about that. Why is God coming to destroy everything instead of to fix everything? It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it, right? God doesn't uh, give us medicine. God kills us and brings us back to life. God doesn't, um, you know, fix the world. God destroys it and creates a new world. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So all of this creation, everything seen and unseen is getting destroyed. The only thing that will be spared is Christians, and there is a new creation, a new heaven, a new earth, awaiting us. That kind of jumps into the next questions. How will everything be destroyed? Peter says fire, stars, planets, those are the heavenly bodies. All these things will melt, including our own planet. Only believers will be spared by Jesus from this destruction. On um, the wages of sin is death. This world, this fallen sinful world will die. The only thing that will be spared is believers who have been spared from the world already spiritually, and though their bodies will die, they will be raised on the last day, taken out of this world in its de decay and dying and destruction to the new heavens and new earth. What are the new heavens and new earth, someone asked. Um, what we commonly call heaven, um, the Bible sometimes calls the new heavens and the new earth. It's the new creation. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many rooms. I go, them to, go there to prepare them for you. Um, that, that's the new earth. That's the new Jerusalem. That's where believers will be. It's a new creation. It's, you know, it's, it's the Garden of Eden, you know, version two, so to speak. That might have been a bad way to put it. But I hope you got my idea. It's new creation. Confirming your calling and election. What does that mean? Let's look at the text. It's uh, 2 Peter 1.10. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. What qualities? He had just mentioned supplementing, that's to support your faith with virtue. Qualities like virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, love. If you practice these qualities, you, are never, you will never fall. In practicing these qualities, you are confirming your calling and election. So the idea is, how are, how are we saved? By faith. We were called to believe in Jesus. We were elected to be adopted into God's family through faith in Jesus. How do we confirm those things, endure those things, hold on to that faith by continuing to believe? And we continue to believe by going to the Word of God. The same seed that sprouted and planted faith in us, that's the same seed that feeds us. We go to Christ's Word to be fed Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and life and salvation. All right, short video. Hopefully this answered at least some of your questions from Second Peter. God bless you guys. Enjoy your day.